Hello everybody and welcome to SQL on the Edge. This is my video series where I go through the latest and greatest developments of the Microsoft Data Platform. My name is Warren Chavez. I'm a SQL Server MCM and MVP with Pythian. Make sure to visit us at Pythian.com. Now for today we're going to discuss Azure Elastic Database Jobs. This is a new feature currently in preview that is targeting Azure SQL Database and is really part of the big family of Elastic Database tools. So we're talking about the developments that Microsoft has done to improve the elasticity, the scale out capacity of Azure SQL Database. This includes the .NET API, Elastic Query, Elastic Pools, many things that we'll go through in, pre in future videos. But for now we're going to focus on the jobs. So this feature allows for schedule scheduling, running jobs, tracking history of jobs, and the jobs can not just be targeted to one database, but they can be targeted to custom collections of database, they could be targeted to shard maps created with the Elastic Database uh, Tools.NET library, and they can be targeted also to the new Elastic Database pools that be, can be created on Azure SQL Database servers. Um, you might be thinking to yourself, well, why is this such a big deal? Well, because there was no SQL agent uh, service that existed on Azure SQL Database. So many of our clients were just deploying Windows machines to be able to use the Windows Task Scheduler to run jobs against their Azure SQL databases and having to code a lot of their own history tracking, for example. Or they were also using the Azure Job uh, Executioner, but that doesn't really give you uh, the semantics or the easy to create with scripts experience that we're used to uh, with on premises. So right now the Azure SQL uh, Elastic Database jobs, they don't give you the really easy uh, GUI based uh, look and feel and experience of SQL Agent, but it's going to get there I'm sure at some point in time. For now it's a lot of scripting uh, and mostly through PowerShell, but once you get the hang of it, it's not really that hard. So let's go through the demo. So we'll go and see some Elastic Databases that I have deployed and how to create and um, see the status tracking and the history of jobs on uh, Azure Elastic Database jobs. So let's check out the demo. I'm connected right now to my Azure subscription and I have created an Elastic Database pool. Like I said, this is a preview functionality so you will have to acknowledge that you are accepting that it's a preview. And then you can pick uh, the three different types of pools that are available right now. So either basic, standard, or premium. In this case, I created a basic uh, tier pool just to test out the, the jobs. As you guys can see, um, there's two buttons up here. There's create job and manage jobs. But on the portal, the only functionality allowed is to run the job against the databases inside a pool. So it has less functionality than what is permitted uh, from the PowerShell scripting. And here, if I go to create a job, you guys will be able to see, I can specify a job name, the credentials, and I can also enter um, some arbitrary SQL script. And I can enter some arbitrary SQL script here. Um, pretty much any type of T-SQL that will run against uh, the databases in the pool. And I can save it and I can run it. And that's pretty much all that the portal is allowing right now. So functionality through the portal, like I said, very limited right now. It's a lot more uh, available on the PowerShell. So let's go into the PowerShell uh, scripting editor and uh, we'll continue the demo there. Okay, so I'm now in the PowerShell environment, and the first thing you're going to want to do is run this Add Azure Account to set up your environment to connect to your Azure subscription. You can see your subscriptions with the Get Azure Subscription command, and after that, you'll start your connection to the Azure SQL Job functionality by using this commandlet, Use Azure SQL Job Connection and the current Azure subscription. It will prompt you for a password and a username that will be the password and the username that can access your Elastic Database uh, Jobs um, database that was created when you installed these components. Now I didn't show the installation here because I wanted to make it a short demo just showing properly the job functionality. Uh, make sure to check out Books Online um, SDN um, and it has all the step by step on how to install the uh, Elastic Database Jobs components. So for example if you want to set up the account that is going to run 
the actual job steps you have to use this uh, concept of the Azure SQL job credential so this is very similar to what we would call uh, proxy accounts for the SQL Server agent. So this is basically a, a, a an account that the Azure Elastic Database job is going to use to authenticate to the target databases of the uh, of the jobs. Okay. So in this case, for example, I created this uh, credential name called Job Runner, and it's basically a database user that I created on my Elastic um, databases as well that I'm using with the Elastic Shard Map. So if you any moment you want to review the credentials that you have currently for running jobs, you can just use this command that get Azure SQL job credential. I'm going to run it right now and just show you guys. So I get this credential name and this username job runner that I already pre-created on my databases. Okay. Now, after you create credentials, there's two other things uh, that I'm going to do right now here. You can create different targets as well um, to see uh, if you're going to point, for example, to a custom collection of databases, if you're going to point to a database, are you going to point to um, an actual shard map if you're using the Elastic.NET API. So for example here we can see I am creating a new Azure SQL job target and this is going to be a database type of job target okay and I'm specifying here um, for this case the actual uh, shard map manager database that has my shard maps that I use for the Elastic test that I am using here okay. Then I'm specifying this other type of target here. It's a shard map manager type of target. So this type of target will connect to a shard map manager, get all the databases that are part of that shard map, and run the job against each database in that uh, shard map. Okay. So now we have uh, two parts that we've reviewed. We've reviewed credentials and we've reviewed targets, right? And this is the uh, command that we use to define targets, new Azure SQL job target, all right? So now, next part of the uh, object model of Elastic Database Jobs, we have to create job content. So job content is pretty much the actual script that is uh, the actual T-SQL that you want to run against uh, the databases, okay? So in this case, I have a job content that says uh, regions table maintenance. I have a table called regions and just for demo purposes I'm just running a simple alter index rebuild on the regions table. Now obviously maintenance is one of the first things that will come to mind to apply to Azure SQL database with this new functionality, right? You can have a set of databases and just run the maintenance through one job for all of them. So in this case, I'm just using this very simple alter index rebuild just as part of the demo. So once you have the script that you want and the name, you create Azure SQL job content. You use this commandlet new dash Azure SQL job content, and that's how you create a the, what is going to be basically the actual uh, executable part of the job, right? The actual script that's going to run against the job. All right. So, and if you want to see what targets are available, you can use this commandlet here as well. Get Azure SQL job target. I'm going to run it now. We'll be able to see. I have here some uh, target types. I have three different uh, databases that are target type database. So that's my Shard Map Manager, and that's my uh, Shard Number Zero and Shard Number One that I've created. And I also have the actual Shard Map itself that points to those uh, elastic databases right here 0 and 1 okay so you can at any point in time you can review that by using these uh, this commandlet right here so now that we have all those components so how do we create a job well now that we have the target that we're interested in in this case we're interested in the shard map we can get the target id from that commandlet right here and we can use it to create the job. So I'm going to specify a job name. I've specified the script name, which is the one I created previously, and then the credential that I want to run it on. That's the job runner credential. And then I do a new Azure SQL job. In this case, I set the content name, I set the credential name, I set the job name, and I give it the target. And that's now how I can execute the job, okay? So let's do a job execution. I pre-created this. So now I'm just going to run it right here. So let's execute the job against the databases. Now when the job starts to execute, as you guys can see here, life cycle of the job says created and then I also get a job execution ID back from the PowerShell output. Now with this 
job execution ID, I can track the rest of the activities of the job. For example, if I want to get the status of the job, I can use this uh, commandlet get Azure SQL job execution. Let's run it now and see how our job is doing. So I can see the job has completed already. It says lifecycle succeeded. We can look into even more details of the job. For example, if we want to see the status of the job, but also what was the status of any of the children tasks of the job. We'll run that now. So we can see this a particular job was composed of three different tasks. It usually, it, when you're executing against a shard map, there's going to be a control task, and then there's going to be a task for each database in the shard map. So if you remember, I have shard 0 and shard 1, so I have three tasks that were part of my job. The control task, the task for shard 0, and the task for uh, shard 1. Okay. Now we can also look at the tasks of the job on in detail and we can sort them as well if we want to. In this case by end time we're going to sort them. Uh, and that if we're using this command let get Azure SQL job task execution. So the previous one was get Azure SQL job execution. Now it's get Azure SQL job task execution. And I'm going to execute that one now as well. And we can see here each task separately and it tells us what it was doing. This is the shard map refresh. So it was reading the new shard maps and then it was doing a script split. So basically it's taking um, the script itself and splitting it into the different other uh, child jobs and then the expand where it creates the other jobs um, to go out and execute against the rest of the, of the databases in the shard. And we can see in this case all of them uh, succeeded without any issues. right? If you're interested as well in the details of just one task in particular, we're going to check that out now as well. So for example, if we're interested in the details for this expand task right here, I'm just going to get that good. And I'm going to replace it, uh, replace it right here. And we can use uh, the get Azure SQL job task execution and pass that particular um, task uh, good and it'll give us uh, the details from just that one in particular. So in this case we can see just that one in particular. Um, if we want to see the list of all the uh, tasks in a job that failed, for example if we were running maintenance against 100 databases and we are only interested in the ones where the task did not succeed, then we can use PowerShell um, snippet similar to this one. So now we're getting all the task job executions into a variable and then for each one of the task executions if the life cycle was not succeeded then we want to see it on the output. So I can run this for example right now and in this case we don't get anything because all of our tasks uh, succeeded. Um, if you want to stop a job while it's executing then you can use this command let's stop Azure SQL job execution so that's pretty straightforward. Now the job system also supports scheduling. So for example, we can create a schedule here. I created this one called daily. And then you give it an interval, you give it a start time, and then you create the schedule. So you give the interval, the name, and the start time. And that's how you create the schedule. If you want to see the schedules that are available right now, you just have to do a get dash Azure SQL job schedule. And we can execute that right now and show you guys the output. And then we'll see that uh, the schedule that I created is this daily. And then there are also pre-existing uh, system schedules that are used for the internal operations of the job execution. So we have this telemetry, heartbeat, cleanup that are used for Azure's own uh, internal work with the Elastic Jobs. Okay. And when we want to associate a job with a schedule, what we want to do is create a trigger. So that's pretty much like the uh, the last uh, object that ties everything together with schedules and the jobs is a trigger. So what triggers a job in this case is simply the schedule. Um, this leads me to believe that we're probably going to have, might have in the future, other type of job triggers. Um, but for now, we have the scheduling. So I have my daily schedule. I have my job name. So I can create a new Azure SQL job trigger and say the schedule name and the job name and this will tie both of them together. Okay. Now there's another type of job that you can create which is gathering data from a job. So a job can go out, for example in this case I'm running a select from orders from all the different shards and I create this job 
and now when I execute it I can also give it a destination information what that means is that it's going to take the result of the job and then insert it into a different result table so you can for example summarize information with this functionality and have it running asynchronously uh, through a job right so for example in this case I create a new Azure SQL job I specify the job name the credential the content and then these are the different uh, flags here parameter flags that we're going to use to actually put the results in a table so we have to specify the result set the destination server results at destination database results at destination schema results at destination table name and the results at credential to connect to that destination and we give it the target ID in this case the shard map manager that we had before okay and then you would execute it in the same way that you have executed the other job that we saw previously okay so I hope you got a good overview what the elastic database jobs feature is offering right now and how it can be augmented in the future as well so it's a customer hosted service so remember the actual objects that run uh, the elastic database jobs run under your subscription it's uh, the portal portal functionality like we show on the demo is a little bit limited right now because it only allows you to schedule jobs against database pools even though under the covers the actual elastic database jobs runtime can do a lot more than that like I showed on the PowerShell demo so if you want to take uh, advantage of the full functionality you're gonna have to get your hands a little bit dirty with PowerShell but uh, really at this point in time most DBAs should be uh, at least on like level 100 of PowerShell uh, just because it's so common and it's on so many of the Microsoft products and uh, once you get used to the actual object model deployed on PowerShell and the different commandlets is not that complicated to work with it's just a matter of you know keeping some of the most common uh, instructions and scripts saved so that you can easily just copy and paste it and, and do the same operations that you would do like changing a script or checking out the job history and so on so uh, stay tuned for our next video. We're going to come up again with another new feature for another episode. So thanks for watching and see you next time.